So welcome to this final part of the tutorial on trails. I've got playing at the moment a render of what we're going to seek to achieve by refining the trails network that we laid down earlier. So how did we achieve that effect? Well rather than going through this step by step uh, what I'm going to do is put up on the web a copy of the file which I've annotated quite extensively but this is just to summarize uh, the main things we've done uh, beyond that uh, done in the earlier lessons. So I've changed the camera so that it now follows the box as it moves around. I've added this reflection surface which is going to reflect the box and the trails. And I've made some pretty significant changes inside the trails themselves. And let's look at that. So the first part of this is more or less what we had before, which is creating the trails and converting them into NURBS curves. Uh, we then add the rank attribute, which as you remember starts from zero near the front of the trail and moves to one at the end of the trail. And then I'm adding a primitive number, which I do by just creating a primitive level attribute and giving it the value of $PR. $PR is a variable which is the primitive number. So this is giving each uh, primitive an attribute with its primitive number in it. And we need this because we're going to adjust our turbulence according to the primitive number. Then I use a refined SOP to add more points to the trails so that we can see a bit more of the detail of the turbulence. And then we have our VOP SOP. And I've changed this quite a bit too. Let's dive inside. So instead of using the position to drive our turbulence, I'm using the rank and the primitive number. And as you can see, the turbulence takes a, a vector. I'm feeding into the first part of the vector the rank, and in the second part the primitive number. So the rank ensures that the turbulence will vary as we go along the trail from one end to the other. The primitive number ensures that each primitive has different turbulence. And then by adjusting the frequency and the offset, we can ensure that that turbulence varies over time. I've got the turbulence profile here, which allows us to adjust the strength of the turbulence according to how far along we are, along the trail we are. And then down here, I've incorporated into this node the width, adding the width which Mantra uses to decide how wide the curve that it renders is. So I've got a width profile driven here by the rank, so that allows me to adjust the width according to how far along the trail we are. And then there's an overall multiplier which allows us to increase the overall width. And then this node here is adding an attribute to every point which is called width. And it's this that the renderer then picks up in order to render the curves. So those are the changes to the trails. Uh, I've also created a bespoke shader called Trail Surface, which is based on the basic surface that comes in the material palette. And I've only really change two parts of it. One is to add some ramp parameters which allow you to vary the alpha of the strand or the trail as uh, you go across it, across the width in one case and as you go along it in the other case. Now in fact at the moment we're not using the width profile but we use the length profile to fade the trails out as they move away from the front. And then this uh, section up here creates two ramps, color ramps, which allow us to vary color across the width of the curve or strand. 
and then this allows us to mix between these two as we go along the strand. And what I'm doing here is starting, as we'll see in a second, with a strand that's coloured uniformly, more or less uniformly across it. And then this profile has two colours with a dark patch in between, uh, and we mix them so that towards the end of the trail this one becomes dominant. So it looks like the trail is splitting into two. Let's uh, look at how that looks in the parameter editor. So this uh, is what changes the alpha so that at the end it's uh, zero and the trail is transparent and at the front it's one and the trail is solid. Note that this is the reverse of what we were using with rank because here we're using the texture coordinate and it happens to be that the texture coordinate is zero at the end of the trail and one at the front of the trail. As you remember rank was arranged the opposite way. The alpha profile across the width we're not using. The colour profile at the beginning of the trail is, as you can see, simply a single colour which fades out towards the edges of the width. And the second one has these two bands of colour. Note that in both cases this is going to be multiplied by the primitive colour attribute that we assigned earlier to the trails. And then we're mixing between the two so that at the front of the uh, rather at the end of the uh, trail we're getting this one and at the front of the trail we're getting this one. So let's just um, see how that renders. I'll bring up a render view and let's render this again. And what we see is that we're getting the reflected trails and cube here. And we're getting this effect where the trail appears to split into two as we go down it. And we're also seeing that the width of the trail gets larger. And we're also getting a bit of turbulence here at the end of the trail. Let's now look at the rendering. I've got uh, the preview render, which we saw here. And then I've got these three different renders connected together, so that if we render this one, these two will also render. This one renders the box with a match shader applied to the trails, so that uh, we can composite the box of the trails later. This one does the reverse, which is to render the trails with a match shader applied to the box. And this one just renders the reflections, and it does that by setting the phantom render attribute on the nodes. Let's have a look at that. And this is achieved uh, via takes. So if we have a look here, we can see we're using the reflection take. I've got a take list here. So the reflection take, we can see in both the box object and the trails, we're changing this VM phantom attribute. Let me show you where that is. So here's the trails. And on the render tab we have this phantom attribute. What phantom does is make an object visible in reflections, but not visible to the main camera. Let's have a look at what the other uh, takes do. Uh, the box take and the trail take simply change the material that we've got applied to the trails in this case and the box in this case and in both cases we're giving it a matte material. 